Episode 40, The Best of 2022, originally written December 28, 2022. And just like that, we are done with 2022. And boy, did we finish the year off with a bang. These last three months have been as busy as ever with quite a lot of new toys joining the toy shelf. And while most of them don't quite end up in the final top 10 of the year, many of them are definitely worth a mention. So let's get the ball rolling with my favorite new toys from the last quarter of 2022. First up, we have the Star Wars Black Series. Of all the Black Series figures to come out in 2022, the Jedi Ayla Secura and the Clone Wars Darth Maul have easily been the most anticipated ever since these two were announced as pipeline reveals way back in February. I've always been a fan of female Jedi characters, and for whatever reason, the blue Twi'lek Ayla Secura has always been my favorite. From the moment she made her debut in the prequel movie, she just stood out for me visually, even if she didn't really do much. And as for Darth Maul, well, he has always been one of my favorite characters in the Star Wars universe, period. And so to finally have this version of Maul, which was basically how he looked at the high point of his character arc during the Seeds of Mandalore and the end of the Clone Wars, is definitely a highlight worth mentioning for the year. Next we have as usual the most prolific line that I collect, Marvel Legends. As par for the course, while not very many specific characters really stand out enough to end up in the final top 10, there were quite a lot of great figures released in 2022, and so here are some of my favorites. Of all the numerous Disney Plus shows that came out, Hawkeye and Moon Knight were the two that I enjoyed the most. So you can imagine how much of a treat it was to get both Clint Barton and Kate Bishop Hawkeyes, plus both Moon Knight and Mr. Knight in one wave of figures. All four of these are very well done plastic representations of their on-screen counterparts. On the movie front, Wakanda Forever was the definite highlight. And you can tell that a large portion of Hasbro's production budget was directed towards figures from this movie. As it is, I'm not a big fan of the character of Ironheart per se, but this new sleek design really won me over. And the trio of Atuma, Nakia, and Shuri's Black Panther are some of the most intricately detailed figures that Hasbro has ever produced. Plus points go to Nakia, who I feel has one of the most realistic head sculpts and likenesses ever done by Hasbro. And finally, on the comic-based front, the highlight would definitely be the Mojoverse figures. I originally ordered the special box set that Hasbro released, but for some reason my pre-order never arrived. So I ended up spending less by getting Longshot and Dazzler, Loose, and the heavily discounted single release Mojo off Amazon, and basically avoiding that useless Wolverine throw-in. Longshot and Dazzler were must-haves since they bring me much closer to completing my favorite X-Men lineup from the Outback. And while the single release Mojo is paler than the one from the box set, it still has a lot of character to go around. And finally, as an expensive cherry on the top of this Mojo World Sunday, I splurged a bit and got myself Spiral, who has inexplicably become one of the most sought-after Marvel Legends of the year. To be fair though, Hasbro didn't skimp and gave us a fully articulated six-armed beauty. Hopefully she will be more readily available next year for more collectors to enjoy. Next up, we have Super 7 Ultimates. Despite having garnered the reputation of extremely delayed pre-order fulfillments, to their credit, Super 7 did manage to release a good number of figures in 2022, filling out two of the main lines that I collect from them. While not all of these releases cracked the top 10, most of these figures remain some of the most detailed and beautifully sculpted pieces in my collection. On the Thundercats front, I got the gigantic snowman from Hook Mountain, who stands a full head over most of the Thundercats. And to even things out, I have the Berserker Captain Hammerhand, both these figures broke my initial resolution of just getting the main characters from the line. But what can I say? I'm weak. And re-watching old episodes with my daughter has reawakened my passion for this line. Then we have more characters to fill out that damn turtle hole that I fell into in 2022. While I have mostly cherry-picked characters off this line, Slash, Leatherhead, and especially Krang are must-have characters in any decent TMNT display in my opinion. So they were all instant buys. The fully armed Slash is menacing. Leatherhead is just massive. And while Krang, Krang is good value for money as he comes with two separate Krangs, both with unique ways to display each brain simultaneously. And finally, we have the Cobra Battle Android Trooper. One of the most successful lines of 2022 was the new 6 inch G.I. Joe classified line. Yet, since I already had an extensive 118th scale 25th anniversary collection, I managed to steer clear of these new Joes despite numerous temptations along the way. 
Instead, I opted to go for Super 7's Joe offering of a slightly larger, cartoon-accurate Ultimates line. While the individual figures are much more expensive than the classified figure, Super 7's slower production rate was something I felt my wallet could handle better. And true to their reputation, despite setting up three waves of pre-orders in the previous year, not a single one was released in 2022. Instead, we got a one-off SDCC exclusive redecoed bat, which was basically a taste of what to expect from the rest of the incoming line. And I was not disappointed. It's a very solid release, and I'm looking forward to more Super 7 Joes next year. And then we have the Transformers. Despite a number of mainline releases, there were only two that I felt that were worth mentioning. The first is Legacy Jaxus. Yes, he is a rather obscure character, and he's got to have one of the gaudiest color schemes to date. But that's why I like him. He stands out. He looks so bad that he's great. I just love these one-off oddball characters. The second is actually the last toy that I got for 2022, so maybe there's a little bit of recency bias, but whatever. Beast Wars Inferno finally finishes off the main Predacon theme that was first started way back in the Kingdom line by Hasbro. And what a way to end it. Through every release, these guys got progressively better, and I think Inferno is the best. I love his giant menacing red ant mode, and his robot mode is just perfect, with that maniacal head with a poseable jaw that wasn't necessary but highly appreciated. It just adds to this guy's character. On the third party front, I have two guys that I originally had no intention of getting. First up, Fanstoy's Phantasm, their take on Mirage. I was already very happy with my current Mirage, Speedstar from Transform Element, and some would say that that version is superior in sculpt and articulation. And while I can somewhat agree, while Fanstoys is no slouch in those departments, it surprisingly beats out Transform Element in engineering. Speedstar can be quite a chore to transform. And I know it might sound silly, but I do like to transform my Transformers every now and then. So, Fanstoys' simpler and more intuitive transformation wins out for me. And then we have X-Transbot's Caravaggio, their take on the extremely obscure character, Hauler. I don't know, I just kept hearing a lot of great things about this specific toy that my curiosity was piqued. I already had the Inferno repaint art fire, so I figured, why not balance it out with a green grapple? And thankfully, this guy lived up to the hype. X-Transbot's for me has always been hit or miss. More on the miss department though, as I usually find their engineering designs to be quite overthought, finicky, and less polished. But this guy is quite the opposite. Very straightforward and solid. Not very X Transpots. Hauler is so good that I was tempted to switch out my current MMC Inferno for X Transpots version. But not today. Not today. And finally, the last highlight for me is the Universal Monsters line from Jada Toys. Ever since these guys were announced many moons ago, I had been sorely tempted to check them out. While I'm not really much of a horror-themed toy collector, these Universal Monsters are, well, universal in their appeal. They bring back a lot of nostalgia for me, from them traipsing around the Universal Studios lot before the tour begins, to the sorely underrated 80s movie, The Monster Squad. I've always been a fan of these classic monster designs, and so when these guys showed up in our local retail toy stores at an incredibly attractive price, resistance was futile. And in hand, these guys really impressed me with their very expressive facial sculpts and fun accessories. Yes, I know this is yet another rabbit hole that I have fallen into, but this isn't a very deep one, I promise. There are only a limited number of monsters yet to be released, including the Mummy, Quasimodo, and the Phantom of the Opera. And once I have those, I think I can call it a day. And with that, we can officially move on to the final top 10 of 2022. Four new entries crash into the list from the last quarter, and so we say goodbye to four older ones. Transformers Legacy Menasaur, and a trio of evil ultimates from Super 7. The thug henchman Bebop and the creepy scientist Baxter from The Turtles, and the mutant technician Vulture Man. And now let's get started with number 10. The first new entry on this list goes to Super 7's Ultimates, Muckman, and Joe Eyeball. When it comes to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I am not the most diehard of fans, which is why it took me so long to get around to buying this guy. I can't really tell you much about this guy's character, but his sculpt was so interesting that it was only a matter of time before I caved. Despite seeing a lot of pictures and video reviews online, there was no preparing me for how much more awesome this guy was in hand. First off, he's huge. 
And secondly, he's just so full of little details of garbage and refuse all around his body. It's like you see something new every time you take a look at him from a different angle. And to top it all off, his face, with his hanging tongue and bulging yellow eyeballs, is just chock full of personality. And speaking of eyeballs, his sidekick, Joe Eyeball, is just extra frosting on the cake. While I didn't expect much, he does come with enough minimal articulation to perfectly complement Muckman, a real potent one-two punch in my book. Then we have number 9, Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure Con Shu. As I mentioned earlier, Moon Knight was one of my favorite Disney Plus shows in 2022, and a big part of it was due to how much more of a character they made the god of vengeance, Con Shu. In the comics that I read growing up, Konshu was really more of a non-entity that served his purpose in Moon Knight's origin, and that was it. Maybe the more recent comics fleshed him out more, but this was my first experience and taste of the more proactive god. Not counting any of the HasLab offerings, Konshu the Builder figure is probably one of the tallest figures that Hasbro has ever produced to date, and every inch of him is masterfully sculpted. From his heavily bandaged body, his even taller moon staff, up to his now iconic crow skull head, he caps off this perfect display with Moon Knight and Mr. Knight. At the 8th spot, continuing the trend of new entries is Haiku, third-party company Metagate's take on a masterpiece drift from the Age of Extinction movie. When initial prototype pictures of this guy started surfacing online, I didn't really give it much thought. Sure, his robot mode looked pretty good, and his car mode, while filled with panel lines, was more than passable, but his helicopter mode looked like a jumbled mess and was completely laughable. To be fair, it was pretty bold for Metagate, a third-party company that I'd never heard of before, to go ahead and attempt a masterpiece Bayformer triple changer, since it wasn't a long shot for this ambition to explode in their face and basically end them. Fortunately for them, it didn't. The more finished pics I saw of this guy drew me in more, and once initial reviews came in mostly positive, it was game over for me. Look, there's no arguing that on a whole the live-action Bayverse movies are trash. Story-wise, that is. But I've always been a fan of the very visually interesting designs, and Drift is no exception. Metagate managed to pull off a really gorgeous and fairly screen-accurate robot mode that transforms to a pretty sleek car. The helicopter mode is still lacking, but it's not as bad as those initial prototype picks made it out to be. More importantly though, while a little bit more involved than I'd like, the engineering isn't half bad, and transforming Haiku between modes isn't too excruciating. At the end of the day, this is a very impressive debut from this supposedly brand new third-party company. Here's to hoping that they tackle Drift's mate Crosshairs next. Number 7 is Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure Bonebreaker. As I mentioned earlier, the X-Men Outback team is my favorite lineup. And on the flip side, while not number one, their enemies, the Reavers, are quite up there in my favorite X-Villains. What started as a lone obscure release of Skullbuster a few years back is now the near completion of this evil mutant cyborg team. The release of Bonebreaker this year, possibly the most visually unique looking member of the team, showed that Hasbro is committed to finishing the job. With Pretty Boy arriving next year, all we would need now is a deluxe Cole and Reese release with multiple switchable parts and the day can be called. Number 6. Fans Toys Chomp or Masterpiece Skull Cruncher To be honest, there isn't very much more to say about this guy. First of all, he's a solid release with both Fantastic Robot and Alligator modes. Secondly, while the transformation could have been very straightforward and boring, Fans Toys made it just a little more interesting and unique. And thirdly, and most important, he finally completes the main three Decepticon Headmasters with Lupus, which was first released way back in 2016, and Dracula in 2018. Now all we need is for Make Toys to get their sh** together and finally give us Brainstorm and Highbrow to complete the Autobot Headmasters in 2023. Coming in at the halfway mark is Super 7 Ultimate's Mumra. Staying true to his name, Mumra the Ever-Living, remains ever-living on my top 10 of 2022. Mumra was a character I wasn't initially overly excited to get. He was more of a checkbox that needed to be filled out in order to complete my Thundercats collection. But once I freed him from his cardboard prison and held him in my hands, I knew that this guy was something special. Very few 6 or 7 inch scaled figures in my collection come close to matching his presence on my shelf. And that's including Marvel Legends, Black Series, or Motu Classic figures. Plus, Mammoth. 
Number 4, Super 7 Ultimates, Monkeyon. Of all the characters in my Thundercats collection, the Evil Mutants are easily my favorite subset of the bunch. Every single one of them, from Jackalman, Slive, Vultureman, and Monkeyon, are amazingly sculpted figures with tons of personality and character. And of the four, Monkeyon comes out on top as the best of this motley crew. The fact that he can edge out an immense figure like Mumra on my list says a lot. I know this may sound odd, but really, staring at this wild monkey man on my shelf just brings me so much joy. Finishing at number 3 is the final new entry on my list. And yes, it's a bit of a cheat, but when it comes to Transformer combiners, I've made it a point to only include them on my lists once the full team is completed. And so with that, I give you the Mechanical Team Constructicons by Black Mamba. Way back in 2020, I started on a risky collection gambit that finally paid off this year. Back then, I was going back and forth on whether to start collecting the Mechanical Team subline from the fourth party company Black Mamba. These were slightly improved and oversized versions of Hasbro Studio Series Bayvers Constructicons. Now, I know not everyone is a fan of the movie Transformer designs. But as I've said before, I like them, especially these Constructicons. I love how almost all the team members are sort of perversions of the typical human form in their designs and proportions. Even their combined form Devastator looks more like a giant ape. Anyway, while the first four members, Rampage, Scrap Metal, Long Haul, and Hightower, were released in relatively quick succession back in 2020, the fifth member was seemingly taking forever to be released. And then there were rumblings going around that Black Mamba had hit some sort of legal issues, which meant that the other members would not be coming out. Then out of nowhere, almost two years later, the fifth member, Mix Master, was announced and eventually released soon after. With this new sign of life, I decided to take the plunge and go all in. I tempered my expectations for the extended wait for the last three remaining members, but to my surprise, Constructicon number 6, Scrapper, followed soon after and before the year ended, I had the last two members, Overload and Demolisher, who were released simultaneously in hand as well. Talk about a photo finish. While he's definitely not perfect, firstly, there is a clear drop in quality between the first and final two members. And some say he's a little too massive and heavy for his own good. There is another more detailed but slightly smaller third-party option out there by another company called Devil Savior. But that set is a lot more complicated to play around with and more expensive. What I love about Black Mamba set is that since it's based on the Retail Studio series line, the individual bots are not overly complicated to transform, despite looking fairly screen accurate. You could transform all 8 members in well under half an hour without breaking a sweat. And like I said, they're big quite big, which is how I like my Bayvers bots, especially Devastator. He needs to tower over all my other movie masterpieces, and he does. And with each member sold at a very reasonable KO price, this is really the best bang for your buck. And so here we are with the second best toy of 2022, Black Mamba's Cybertron Cavaliers, their take on a masterpiece Optimus Prime from the last night. Well. This is a surprise. From the moment I got this guy in hand, I knew instantly that he wasn't just a shoe-in for my year-end top 10 list, but a very strong contender for the number one spot. As expected, in my first installment, he shot up straight to number one and remained there throughout the next two parts with no other toy coming close. And when I started this final installment, there was no doubt in my mind that Cybertron Cavaliers would finish off the year still on top. That is, until I started to actually write and rethink my list. Look, on any other day, there is no doubt in my mind that Cybertron Cavaliers would make the perfect number one toy for 2022. For a masterpiece transformer, this guy is nearly flawless, with an accurate and amazingly kibble-free robot mode, to a realistic vehicle mode, and a non-headache inducing and fairly intuitive transformation process between the two. He's got size, and he definitely has presence, especially with his extensive and ultra-detailed paint job. But here's the thing. I know that I sound like a broken record at this point, always saying how stuff like sculpt, paint, and detailing play a big part in my rankings. But they are not the sole criteria for my placements. A huge part of collecting for me are the intangible factors like nostalgia and, well, love. Which brings me to the surprise number one toy of 2022. Super 7 Ultimates, Chitara. 
Okay, so admittedly, as far as action figures go, as far as my other Thundercats go, Chitara is fairly average in terms of, here I go again, sculpt, paint, and even playability and posability. But putting her side by side with the flashier and objectively more impressive Cybertron Cavaliers, and really thinking about which one I'm currently more excited about to have in my collection, well, really it's no contest. First of all, nostalgia-wise, I have almost close to zero connection to the last two live-action Transformer movies, Age of Extinction and The Last Knight, where this specific iteration of Optimus Prime is featured in. I got Cybertron Cavalier solely because, well, he looked cool. On the flip side, while I never collected any Thundercats toys as a kid, the cartoon was a definite favorite of mine, and that opening intro song and animation possibly being one of the best ever made. Secondly, as Tyrion Lannister famously said in the finale of Game of Thrones, there is nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. And as fellow Thundercats fans can attest to, collecting modern day Thundercats toys has been one hell of a roller coaster story full of excitement over the birth of a new line, followed by bitter disappointment at its abrupt cancellation. This specific classics line was started by Mattel way back in 2016 but was cancelled a year later without them even completing the main theme of Thundercats, including Chitara. And I spent years sadly staring at huge Tigra and Chitara holes in my display. It took a number of attempts by Super 7 to finally pick up the license and finish the job, and even then I had to wait the longest for Chitara to finally arrive. Chitara's arrival in 2022 finally completed my main Thundercats team after six long years. Definitely the highest collecting highlight for me for the year, with everything after that as just pure gravy. And finally, the most important factor is, well, love. As I mentioned in the previous entry, Chitara, alongside Filmation Tila and Scarlet from the G.I. Joe cartoon, who I am hoping to receive next year, form my ultimate triumvirate of my childhood female crushes. Not only did these three characters give me the tingles and feels as a kid with their beauty, okay, keep their minds out of the gutter. They were also prime examples of strong female characters that I could look up to and admire, something that I feel is equally important for a young boy to see growing up. So when it comes to my favorite toy of 2022, the intangibles have it. Game, set, and match. Chitara takes the top spot for the year. So what about everyone else out there? What are some of your favorite toys of 2022? And what are your own personal reasons and criteria for picking them? Let me know in the comments down below and tell me your story. Thanks for watching Stories from the Toy Shelf Redux. If you enjoyed this story, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel to help me tell more. Until the next one.